it's official. Samsung and OnePlus are officially at war. While OnePlus has been attacking Samsung in their home turf of the Android flagship with their own flagship OnePlus 8 Pro, Samsung has been retaliating with cheaper flagship killer phones like the Galaxy S20 FE. Let's compare them today with a comparison between the OnePlus 8T and the Galaxy S20 FE. I'm Rohan from Techie Tech Tech and here we go. A quick look at both these phones and they look like they're inspired by the same design language. Both have an extremely similar design with a rectangular camera module on the top left. The OnePlus 8T is offered in two color options, blue and silver, while the S20 FE gives you a more wide array of colors to choose from. It's when you hold them that you realize how different the two phones are. The glass back on the OnePlus 8T combined with the matte aluminium sides feels much more flagship-like compared to the plastic or glass-stick back on the S20 FE combined with the glossy aluminium frame. There's a reason Samsung and basically every brand uses glass on their more expensive flagships. It just feels more luxurious and more refined. But that does not mean that a plastic bag doesn't come with its own advantages. Far from it. For one, the S20 FE is far more likely to survive drops compared to the OnePlus 8T or any glass bag phone for that matter. The plastic bag also allows the S20 FE to be more robust and abuse friendly and it's definitely the phone which I would be more comfortable carrying without a case. In true Samsung fashion, the Galaxy S20 FE has an IP68 rating for dust and water resistance. In true OnePlus fashion, the OnePlus 8T includes no official rating to cut costs even though they have been known to include some sort of dust and water protection. One factor in OnePlus's favor is that the 8T has used Gorilla Glass 5 on both the front and the back. Samsung has used the cheaper Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and even cheaper plastic on the back of the S20 FE. Flip over to the front of the phone and we have a flat, bezel-less display on both the phones. The OnePlus 8T has a selfie camera cutout on the top left compared to a cutout bang in the middle on the S20 FE. Here's another one of my biggest complaints with the S20 FE. Let's focus on that camera hole. It has this shiny metal ring in it which stands out even when the display is off. I just cannot ignore it. I've had instances where I'm using the phone with the display on and there's light shining on the metal ring in the punch hole which just ruins the whole experience. If you look at the OnePlus 8T in comparison with the display off, the dark selfie camera cutout blends in to give a more seamless look. Even when you're using it, the selfie camera here is much easier to forget and ignore than the one on the S20 FE. I don't know what Samsung was aiming for here and I don't even know if this bothers only me or other users as well. But what I do know is that it seems Samsung has deliberately cut a few corners here to make the S20 feel and look less premium than their more expensive flagships like the Galaxy S20. Let's talk about the actual display quality now. Both phones have an AMOLED panel with the same resolution, the same 120Hz refresh rate and roughly the same screen size. They are extremely similar displays on paper and should provide a somewhat equal experience. And for the most part, they do. But here's where they do not. Firstly, I've experienced a number of touchscreen issues with the Galaxy S20 FE. Some googling around showed that I'm not alone and a lot of users have also complained about experiencing something similar. Samsung has acknowledged this and they say that they'll fix it with a future software update. But that's not all unfortunately. The S20 FE's panel is just not as vibrant or bright as the panel on the OnePlus 8T. Samsung also does not allow you to permanently set the display to 120Hz all the time only giving an adaptive refresh rate option. This problem simply does not exist on the OnePlus 8T where you can set the display to 120Hz permanently. I never thought a day would come when I would pick any other display over a Samsung phone's panel but it seems that day is here. The display experience on the OnePlus 8T is simply better and I prefer it over the one on the S20 FE. Let's move on to the performance now. We have the LTE version of the S20 FE here which has Samsung's in-house Exynos 990 processor 
which is great for day to day use like social media, texting, browsing and even occasional gaming. However, it is not suitable for power intensive tasks like heavy gaming or video editing as it leads to thermal throttling. If you can get the 5G variant of the S20 FE which has the faster and more efficient Snapdragon 865 processor. This processor makes the phone powerful enough to run the most intensive of games and apps without breaking a sweat. Unfortunately, the S20 FE 5G is not sold in a lot of regions like here in India. With the OnePlus 8T, you get the Snapdragon 865 everywhere and in every variant. It is a performance beast. Be it day to day use or heavy gaming or video editing, the OnePlus 8T takes on everything like a champ. Speed and fluidity has always been one of the main selling points of the entire OnePlus experience and that's also the case with the OnePlus 8T. If you're a heavy gamer or someone who prioritizes fast performance, the OnePlus 8T is more suited to you compared to the S20 FE LTE. On the other hand, if your smartphone usage is mostly social media, email, web browsing, texting and some casual gaming, the S20 FE is more than capable for your needs. If you are considering the S20 FE 5G instead, its performance is at par with the OnePlus 8T simply because they share the same processor. Let's talk about the software experience now. The S20 FE runs One UI whereas the OnePlus 8T runs Oxygen OS 11. Both of these software experiences have a lot of ups and downs but what I can tell you conclusively is that these are my personal top 2 favorite Android skins. Samsung's One UI has evolved a lot from the laggy mess that was TouchWiz. It just feels more well put together, integrated and mature now. While Samsung includes a lot of useful features, they also include a lot of bloatware. For every Google service, Samsung has an alternative of their own with the Samsung Internet Browser for Google Chrome, Bixby for the Google Assistant, and Galaxy Store for the Play Store. The list is basically endless. But some users prefer using some of these Samsung services, so maybe it is unfair to rule them all out as bloat without giving them a try. Oxygen OS on the other hand is a totally different story. Oxygen OS is very light and mostly bloat free compared to One UI. I can confidently tell you that it is the fastest feeling Android skin today with smooth animations, great optimization and an overall lag free experience. One thing to keep in mind though is that a lot of people don't like the somewhat funky design language on the new Oxygen OS 11 which is a departure from the stock Android look of the fan favorite Oxygen OS 10. I personally don't mind it very much but this is personal preference. Another thing that I'd like to share from my personal experience is that phones which run Oxygen OS, so basically OnePlus phones, tend to run smoother and faster over the years compared to any other Android phone. So, if you want the more feature-rich, more mature Android skin of the two, go for the S20 FE with Samsung's One UI. On the other hand, If speed, performance and minimal bloat is more your kind of thing, you cannot go wrong with the OnePlus 8T. Let's talk about the cameras now. In terms of optics, the OnePlus 8T sports a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel primary shooter, a 16 megapixel ultra wide shooter, a 5 megapixel macro and a 2 megapixel monochrome depth camera. The S20 FE has a triple camera setup with a 12 megapixel primary camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera and a dedicated 8 megapixel telephoto shooter. On paper, the OnePlus 8T certainly appears to have an edge with a commonly used primary sensor and a higher number of cameras while the Galaxy S20 FE has larger sensors. Let's find out how they perform in real life. As always, we'll talk about the photos first and then move on to the videos. The primary camera on the Galaxy S20 FE renders better colors with high saturation and warmer tones. On the other hand, the OnePlus 8T shoots contrasty stills with faster processing. Even though the 8T has a higher resolution sensor, the S20 FE's larger sensor manages to pull more details with a higher dynamic range, making it significantly better in well-lit scenarios. The S20 FE has a slightly wider ultra-wide lens than the OnePlus 8T. Thanks to the larger sensor and pixel size, the S20 FE produces stills with low noise and better colors, again better than the ones clicked on the OnePlus 8T. The only disadvantage is that it lacks autofocus. The OnePlus 8T does not have a telephoto camera and uses hybrid zoom to produce 2x zoomed-in stills. 
The stills produced on the AT have low noise but lack sharpness. On the other hand, the S20 FE sports a dedicated 8 megapixel telephoto camera which produces almost 3x zoom lens stills. The pictures shot on the S20 FE zoom lens are sharper with good bokeh. Again, objectively better than the OnePlus 8T. Thanks to the dedicated depth sensor, subject separation is slightly better on the OnePlus 8T, but the S20 FE still renders better colors. In terms of speed, the 8T is far ahead of the S20 FE with lower processing times. The OnePlus 8T 16 megapixel front camera takes better selfies than the 32 megapixel front camera on the S20 FE. It produces over smoothened pictures even with the beauty mode off, while the OnePlus 8T takes sharper selfies with better skin tones. Moving on to low light performance, the pictures shown on the OnePlus 8T are brighter but suffer from color casting issues with some weird artifacts. On the flip side, the S20 FE produces pictures with rich details and better noise processing with no color casting issues. One major downside of the S20 FE though is the significantly longer image processing times. The difference is very very large. The OnePlus 8T can also take macro shots but the image quality is far below average so I wouldn't necessarily call it an advantage. When we talk about the videography, both devices are at par when it comes to video resolutions and frame rates but do note that the OnePlus 8T has better lens variety than the Galaxy S20 FE. The S20 FE has a feature-rich camera app while the 8T provides an overall snappier and smoother camera app experience. The video quality in terms of colors and HDR is actually pretty good on both the devices. On a closer look, we found that the OnePlus 8T shoots sharper videos while the videos shot on the S20 FE have some noise in them. To conclude, while the OnePlus 8T has an above average camera system which should be enough for most casual social media users, the Galaxy S20 FE has Samsung's flagship level image processing and better hardware which delivers objectively superior pictures and videos to make it the clear winner in this department. Moving on to the power situation, both phones offer decent battery life with around 4.5 to 5 hours of screen on time or roughly a day's worth of mid to heavy usage. What's not the same though is the charging situation. While the Galaxy S20 FE supports 25W fast charging, Samsung includes a 15W charger in the box so you'll have to spend extra money to buy a 25W power brick to use the fastest charging option that the S20 FE is capable of. The OnePlus 8T on the other hand is the first OnePlus phone to support OnePlus's new Warp Charge 65 which is basically the fastest charging ever on a smartphone. I've seen it charge from 0 to 50% in just 15 minutes and from 0 to 100% in just 40 minutes with my own eyes. Warp Charge 65 is simply incredible. What's more, they include the 65 watt adapter in the box which is awesome. Now both phones have an optical fingerprint sensor. Both have roughly the same performance in terms of speed, reliability and accuracy. The OnePlus 8T sensor feels faster in real life usage but that's more because of the faster animations on Oxygen OS than actual sensor speed. Talking about the actual phone call experience, I think it's better on the S20 FE. It holds on to a signal better and is also having the better earpiece with more clarity. Now don't get me wrong here, that absolutely does not mean that the OnePlus 8T is bad at phone calls. It's actually pretty good by itself. But when you put it in a comparison, the S20 FE is just slightly better. Now both phones offer stereo speakers and they are both pretty adequate, sufficiently loud and good amount of clarity. One important thing to note here though is that the OnePlus 8T offers far better haptics with a far better vibration motor. Another important thing to note here is while the S20 FE supports wireless charging, the OnePlus 8T does not. In conclusion, should you buy the OnePlus 8T or the Galaxy S20 FE? The choice between these two phones is quite easy actually. The S20 FE is the more loaded phone in typical Samsung fashion with a feature rich and more complete ecosystem, much better camera experience, IP68 rating and wireless charging. The only area where I cannot recommend it is heavy gaming or basically any performance intensive usage because of the Exynos processor. On the other hand, the OnePlus 8T nails the essentials with a beefier processor, much faster charging and better display. 
It also has a lighter and smoother software experience which tends to stay that way even after years and years of usage. If you're someone who wants the fastest, lightest experience that Android can offer or if you're a hardcore smartphone gamer, the OnePlus 8T is clearly the better choice for you. Or maybe you should look for an S20 FE 5G because that basically offers the best of both worlds. I hope this video helped you out and if it did, please help us back by sharing this video, liking it and subscribing to our channel. Until then, this has been Rohan from Techie Tech Tech and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.